Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and here I am to show you how to set up the Rode Streamer X. In this video, I'm going to give you a detailed setup guide on the Streamer X, obviously connecting everything up, but more importantly, the software tweaks that you can make to make it sound fantastic, and also give you multiple audio tracks virtually in OBS that you can then edit in your favorite video editing software. I'm gonna show you how to plug everything in, where to connect things, and also how to tweak the microphone and adjust it so that you can get it sounding good with an XLR microphone. And I'm gonna show you the settings that you'd use for the Shure SM7B as a demo to how to make the most of the Revolution preamps and get it sounding really good. I'm using the microphone now for the voiceover for this video, and I'm gonna show you what to do and tweaks to make in the software to get it sounding fantastic. First of all, we're gonna start with the setup at hardware level and plugging everything in. So inside the Streamer Xbox, you'll find a number of different things that you'll need to keep in mind. One is the power brick, because you will need mains power for this. You'll notice on the back, there's a USB-C connector with a lightning bolt on it. That's where you need to plug that in. You need to make sure that it's powered on. There are multiple other ports as well. No USB-C port one is gonna be very important, for example as a minimum, and also that you want to plug your HDMI cable in there and your XLR microphone. And notice the button for 48 volts of phantom power if you're planning on using such a thing, which we don't need here. But you plug in your XLR microphone, so in this case I'm using the Shure SM7B. Naturally it will work with other mics as well, but I'm showing you the process for that now. Plug the microphone in first, then the USB-C cable for the power brick. Make sure that's plugged into the mains. It will need power directly from the wall, as well as the connection to your PC. Then you have a USB-C cable that plugs into port one. That's important if you're only using a single PC setup, and that's what this video is based on, then you plug it into port one and you don't use port two. If you do a dual PC setup, you'll need the second port. Now for mic monitoring, obviously you're gonna to need to plug a headset into this. I'm using the SteelSeries Nova Pro Wireless. You'll need an adapter to plug in there, plug the cable into that, it's a 3.5 millimeter cable. So if you've got standard headphones, you can just plug it into there, or you can use a 3.5 millimeter on both ends to plug it into the base station of a wireless headset like this one, and then you can wirelessly mic monitor. Plug in your HDMI source, let's say a camera, into the in port on the Streamer X, and then you can access that in OBS. So you then have all the things that you need, microphone, camera, and PC connection, as well as power to then be able to use this Streamer X in a variety of ways and easily access all the things you need to. So the first step is to download, install, and run Road Central. This will allow you to check for firmware updates. You can see the version here, but you can also dive into device configuration and other settings up here in the settings cog, for example to grab firmware updates from the available firmware, which is obviously worth doing. You can also see that you have a quick setup here with various different buttons and the option to customize your smart pads. The smart pads are the buttons on the side, the colored ones, and you can basically go through the list here. You'll see the standard ones. Um, you can choose to add different files into them. There's three pages here. You can add an additional one. You can put sounds specifically into it. You can choose from various different effects for your voice and do other things, including censoring your voice or doing MIDI controls and other things. I'm not gonna go into great depth on there because mostly wanna focus on the audio setup. So you'll notice in the audio setup, you have the option of streaming, presentation, video call, and gaming. Now as standard, the streaming one will be what a lot of people will use and the gaming one is an alternative if you're, if you're not streaming. Now, one thing I wanna point out is that you have volume options here. So you'll see this little indicator is basically what's going on with the stream audio, and then this is your headset audio. And you can adjust the levels of these individually. So you could put, for example, that audio of the HDMI source, you don't wanna hear it, but you want your stream to hear it. Probably the other way around would be logical, but you can also adjust the volume of each of these and tweak the sample pads. You can also link the controls so that it can be adjusted this way. The reason I mentioned this is the important point here is USB one, you'll notice that I've unlinked it and I've knocked it out of the stream sound. And that's because I found what happens here that's problematic is that with the audio from Discord, so when I'm chatting to my friends, they end up hearing their own voices or game audio fed back to them through this. 
So that's one of the problems I've noticed when using Rode Central. Now you'll see the controls in here, there isn't much to what you can do sadly, but you can tweak the microphone, so that is worth doing. Now I'm using the Shure SM7B, I've got my levels set to 58 decibels currently. The other thing you can do is you can go into the advanced settings on here, so if you click on advanced, you can then click on each of the things individually. Now, one of the nice things about the Rodecaster Pro 2 and the Rodecaster Duo is for the Shure SM7B, for example, it had dedicated sound set up specifically for this microphone. And what I've done is I've basically copied the settings in there so you can do the same with a Streamer X. So the high pass filter is frequency 70 hertz, the slope is 12 decibels. The DS are settings, we're looking at somewhere around 29 decibels. Obviously, you'll need to play around with this, work out what works best for you. But these are the settings that I've found are working well for me and make the microphone sound good. So you can see what we've got set up here and that. And into the noise gate settings, somewhere around 36 decibels. Again, works as the threshold for me. Hold 50 milliseconds. The range somewhere around 12 decibels is probably ideal. Then you can see release is 200, attack 30 milliseconds. In the compressor settings, we're looking at about 28 decibels, something around that. Again, you might have to tweak all this, but if you want to go into this sort of granular level, you can do this and tweak here, or you can just copy what I've got and you should find that with a Shure SM7B at least, you'll have a good sound out of it there. Then we've got the high bell set to 1000 hertz, mid bell 400, low bell 100. Gains at 2.9 and the mid is 1.4. It's a little bit fiddly to adjust. And then the low gain will set to 2.9 ish. And the exciter, you want to tweak that to about 89. Somewhere around there. 61 for the drive. 90 hertz for the tune. And then panning, we wouldn't touch. You can use Rode Unify for this microphone for controlling that. It's a virtual mixing studio that allows you to control various different things and tweak the settings in there. However, I don't think it's as powerful as SteelSeries GG. Now that might be controversial and Rode probably won't like it, but I would suggest this is the better route to go alongside Rode Central once you've made those tweaks that I just showed you for various different reasons. If you're a streamer or a content creator that makes gameplay videos and other things, then this is pretty logical choice. It has multiple different virtual channels and you can see that we've got game, chat, media, auxiliary and microphone. You can customize the audio levels in a similar way. So again, you've got a streaming option, a headset option. You can do other things in here as well. So for example, you can go into the game settings and you can select your favorite game. I've got Escape from Tarkov set up here and then that will have an EQ profile tuned specifically for that game. You can apply spatial audio, smart volumes, and other things to improve the audio quality there. Under the chat section, you can also turn on EQs, clearcast, AI noise cancellation, noise reduction, compressor, noise gate settings. This will actually tweak your friend's audio, so what you're hearing for your friend's microphones, which can be pretty powerful. You can also do the same for media and auxiliary and there is a mic setting. Now, don't use any of the settings in here. I've set this to default and then everything else is turned off because obviously we've just applied processing through the Streamer X at a hardware level, making the most of Rhodes preamps and other things in there for the Shure microphone. We don't want to then put software level tweaks on top of it as well. So I'd recommend leaving this alone. But the reason I'm recommending using Sonar and turning on Streamer mode so make sure you turn on the streamer mode, is it gives us the option to have virtual audio channels which we can then use in OBS, which I'll show you in a second. So during the setup process, you'll be talked through various different things in here for customizing the audio. So for the master mix, what you want to do is click on COG, and then you'll see you have three different options. We have personal mix, which is where you want the audio to go out from. You can either choose speakers, streamer, X, main, and that will come through the 3.5 millimeter connection, or you can go headphones, Arctis Nova Pro Wireless. I go between these, I haven't decided which one's best yet, but basically they're doing the same thing because obviously we've plugged in the 3.5 millimeter connection. So choose your headphones, 
the Streamer X makes the most logical choice if you've got the 3.5 millimeter headset plugged into the Streamer X for mic monitoring. That's your personal mix. That's the audio that you're going to hear. Then you have the Stream Mix, which we want to set as Still Serious Sonar Stream Mix. So that's a stream mix there. That's basically everything mixed into one. So that'll be your game audio, your chat audio, your microphone and other things mixed into one source that you'd use in OBS and elsewhere for your stream mix that you'd send to Twitch and everything else. And then you have your mic input, which in this case is obviously the Streamer X main. Now with that combination, what you then end up with is a few different audio sources. Still see Sonar is pretty intelligent at working out where things go. So if you launch a game, it'll automatically end up in this game section. If you launch Discord and then I go into a channel, you'll see it appears in the chat section here automatically. But you may want to go into your user settings, voice and video, and then select the chat settings from in here. So we'd use the Steel Series Sonar microphone as our input, and then you'd have Steel Series Sonar Chat as the output, and that would be the sound that you hear through there. But obviously, Discord's there in the chat section anyway, and you can then also use the sliders here to adjust the volume. So if your friends are being too loud, you can turn them down if you don't want the stream to hear as much of them, or turn them down for you. Whichever way around you want it to, you can tweak that. Your game will automatically appear in game sections and other things. If you right click on your Windows speaker icon and go to Windows sound settings, you'll want to make sure that your sound settings are set up like this. So output is still Sirius Sonar Gaming. That's what you're going to be hearing, all the audio in there. And then the input is still Sirius Sonar Microphone because we've told still Sirius Sonar to use the Streamer X as the microphone. So don't select that as your mic. Instead, you want Steel Series Sonar selected. So gaming and sonar. There's a lot of different options in here, but that's because they're used for the virtual different soundscapes. Now we're in OBS. I want to show you what you can do with this because this is why it's more powerful to use it this way and superior in my mind. Click on your settings, go into your audio settings, and then you have various different audio profiles in here. Now, as a minimum, what you'd want to do is set up your microphone as still series sonar stream. So just choose that as the basic one if that's all you want to do. If you want everything down mixed into the stream output, then set that up there and then just disable the rest of them. But if you want multiple audio tracks for use in recordings or for other things, then this is how I set mine up and one recommendation for it. So what I'm doing is, first of all, your desktop audio is set to Steel Series Sonar Gaming. That will give you the game sound specifically, so just the audio from the game and nothing else. Then we have Desktop Audio 2, which is Steel Series Sonar Chat. So that's the audio just from Discord and nothing else, or whatever other chat tool you're using. So you can use that in game if you have an option for VoIP in game, for example. Select Steel Series Sonar Chat as your output, and then that will be there. And then you have your mic, which is the stream stream, as I said already. And then I have also selected microphone streamer X main for just my mic. You don't necessarily need to do that, but it gives you options because you could also choose other things from the list. So you can see there are other things and there are other things in each of them. So maybe you might want to choose auxiliary or media. So you might want music in there as a separate track, for example. And then if you go to your output section, what you want to do is scroll down here in your recording bit and tick to have how many tracks you want to use. So based on how many we just put in the audio section, I've put four here as my audio tracks that are ticked. Now down in the audio mixer, right click and click advanced audio properties. And then you should find this window pops up with your various different things in here. So you can see I've actually named them individually so I know what they are. You can do that quite simply. So as standard, they'll all be ticked. What you want to do is untick them all. You need to work out which one is which. So the stream mix you want as one, because that's obviously everything mixed into one. Then what you want is your game audio is in track two. So that would just be game audio. Chat audio in track three. And then whatever else you want. So I'm going for my microphone, for example, in track four. And you can pick all that. And then you should have a nice clean setup where just for the stream, so for Twitch, for example, you've got everything 
from your Sonar stream mix mixed in there. And then you have separate audio recordings with the virtual channels for everything else. So for Discord and other things there. When you go into DaVinci Resolve, for example, and we grab a gameplay clip or whatever you want, you'll see that you then have multiple audio tracks in here. So we've got game audio, we've got mic audio, we've got chat audio, and it's all just in multiple tracks. And you can select which ones you want to use. You can reduce the levels of one bring up the levels of another. So if you just wanted to hear your voice or you just want to hear game audio, you can do that and you can do it really easily. And this is a much more streamlined system and it allows you to mix other things and delete issues that you might have with your friends hearing themselves back through the Streamer X, which is something I encountered when trying to use Unify. The other thing I haven't mentioned is setting up the video capture. So obviously if you plug an HDMI source into it, I'm using a camera in this example, but you might want something else. But what you want to do is click on the sources on the plus icon here, then click on video capture device and then pick a name. Let's say Streamer X, create that as a video source and select it from the drop down. And you should then see it appear in the little window up here. I'd recommend then right clicking on it and then transforming it, setting it to whatever you want. I'm gonna to fit to screen just so you can see me in full screen here, and that'll make your life a little easier. In terms of settings, obviously you can resize it and apply whatever else you want to it. Now, one of the things I have noticed with this that you might pick up on is that you, when you do this, when you've got an HDMI source plugged in, you might find that you're hearing it through the headphones. So what I found initially, for example, is I was hearing myself through the microphone, but I saw I could hear twice and I was hearing more background noise than I should be. And that's because the camera's also being picked up. And it's not being picked up in OBS because we haven't set it in OBS, so it's not doing it there. But what it is doing it is it's through Rode Central. So if you open up Rode Central in the settings here, you'll see that you have an HDMI option in there and you can set to listen to that source. So if you're using a camera and you don't want to hear it and you don't want the audience to hear that microphone because you don't want to be doubled up, presumably the mic on the camera is not as good as your microphone anyway, then you want to minimize this, drop the volume levels right down to the bottom so that it can't be heard. And that way you won't also hear it in your headphones, which could be pretty distracting and make you think that you've got problems with your mic that you haven't. Obviously, that would be different if you've got a source and you're doing a two PC streaming setup. And I'm not going to go in depth on that because I haven't got the resources to be able to do it. But I would recommend checking out Rode's own website because you will find out stuff on there. They have guides to Unify and other things as well as videos on those things. So maybe there's something on depth on that, but hopefully you found this video useful with some insights into the Streamer X and the best way to make the microphone sound good and get some good results out of it. If you have, check out the links in the description to other similar videos you might find useful. Let me know in the comments what you thought and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks very much for watching. You've made it right to the end of the video, you brilliant legend you. If you've enjoyed it, click that subscribe button, give me a thumbs up, and drop me a comment down below if you've got any questions. If you really enjoyed it, consider joining the channel and see the benefits of doing so. Check out these other videos. You might well find them interesting or useful. And most importantly, have a great life.